this, if anything, should be a map that plays to EM strengths to a degree. I'm very interested to see how Runaway deals with it. Yeah, one, one good thing to mention as well is the fact that point number two is actually pretty good for Doomfist. There are so many walls you can kind of collide with, plus you can go from the, the top rope, you know, elbow slam, they're giving the people's elbow straight on top of the head, like um, from the, the, the canister things in the brewery. There, there are so many places that he can sit around. Oh, he's too... Oh my goodness, that's not what you want to see. Well, you know what? That, that's why you got the one-up mushroom. You got Mercy there and like, just get <laughs> up and try again. But, you know, Rez's not going to be up for a while. And if nothing else, a shot across the bow. And Exy immediately ripping apart 50% to ult early, Jaws. This is insane. The halt has so many good interactions. And one of them being the Widowmaker, another nice shot onto Ganon Jin. Yeah, Exy, he's going to have ult for the next fight, ZP. Funnily enough, would it make a click a couple of heads? Plus, the rather large head hitbox of the Orisa. She also has to make a decision, too. Fortify is a very, very interesting ability. It stops a lot of CC coming through. It stops the Hulk more often than not, and the Hook. Do you use that to stop getting halted and then hooked? Or do you use that to stop getting insta-killed and insta-planed by the headshot uh, of the Widowmaker? Exy has popped the sights already and run away. They've only just got out of sport. Uh, Runaway, they've gone out of spawn, but do they know what to do outside of spawn is a question. I think right now they're a little bit punch drunk from the early shots thrown in. Sparkle oh, to the back, oh. built up the barrage and record speed. And this is dominance, and it starts directly outside the spawn door. Oh boy. Far is pretty good on this map, huh? <laughs> you can hide on the top of the roof. There is a skybox that exists. Sparkle has not yet hit it. The best thing about this is that he can just do what he's doing here. It, it, it's a situation where it's like playing against a Widowmaker and a Doomfish. You have to look two ways. And if you look one way, guess who's going to pile rockets into your back or a headshot's going to come through from the Widow. He still manages to take out Unique, though, in a good start for Runaway. Sparkle gets revenge, but here's the problem. Sparkle has no heals at this point. Sparkle, his, his only friend is the rooftop for a little bit of cover. And Runaway slowly but surely grinding their way out of spawn. But look at the time here, Jaws. Two minutes already gone. Two minutes have gone down the drain, and they moved a meter, ZP. Runaway now can move forward. They can get a nice little position there. The problem is they didn't actually tag out Exy. So he's almost got free real estate, and you can see what they're trying to do now is try and punish him for that. He can try and set up as best he can. Shields are going to be in the way, yes, and sights are there. But as soon as those goes down, he is going to be out in the front line. Supercharger has been used fairly early, though. They're trying to roll on through this first point. Well, it's an unprotected Supercharger. You just see Roadhog roll up and deal with it. But okay, QQ down on the other side. Elven Mystic really applying quite a bit of pressure here from the defense. Runaway, they're down a key member. Yaki under pressure. And QQ! Get me going the Hammond here. The swap back in, apply pressure they want, commit to this heavy offensive push. Actually, meanwhile, getting out of sidelines. It's a much more difficult area. Hammond in his face, but look at the peel! You gotta protect Zexy, he's on fire. It was a bit unfortunate earlier. MCG actually jumped in the way of that, uh, that Holt coming through so he can actually headshot anybody. Hisu finds his head eventually, but Nano on the Genji, and now you're gonna have to run Hisu. Eventually goes down and Sparkle now has the blade. He's gonna unleash the ZP. Goes in, gets one immediate slash, goes up, and it's just a good economy blade there for Sparkle. Let's go thing crazy. Gets two eliminations, wins the fight, and runaways in real trouble here, Jaws. Final 33 seconds remaining. And they don't get through. That's going to be a first point hold. He was on the fire, but no. I want to play Genji now. So he's now playing Genji. XD's going to have a lot of space as well. Waiting for Runaway to come back through. And with QOQ on the ball, he's going to be provide a major distraction. But the only real person he can take out is MCD. And he's going to be more than protected with Takiyaki and Happen at his back. Happen has been so good at peeling away for XD. He's going to do the same for MCD. Exe, room to work with, and Orisa exposed! This is not where you want to be as Orisa! Already almost down, Exe though! Decides to go for the paint, doesn't land the shot. EM, still applying a lot of pressure to the runaway, runaway. All six still up, moving to point, but Exe strikes! Finds he too. OT! Six on five, and they can't stand the point! Disaster! Oh my goodness. How do you live with yourself after that? You got the pick? That, well, you didn't get the pit. You actually got kind of owned. But you are so close to the point with an Ant Matrix at your back as well. You need one tank to touch. And you have a Wrecking Ball as well. Runaway kind of C9 that point. You can see how far the cart really needs to make it now. Element Mystic. Now with all that they need.
You just need one initial fight here and you can do what Runaway attempted to do and try to roll on to second using that Supercharger and the whole hog. It was such a nice pickoff from Exy taking away Hisu. And that prompted Kyoku, you could see there in the little replay, to go, okay, I need to take this guy out. If we don't take Exy out, he's going to get space. Our tanks are going to be useless. He rolls on forward to try and go down. Pile drivers. Oh, I didn't step on the payload. Well, I guess we now lose. Hello, the Mystic. strange thing to me in all of this is the entire part that... Think about this. This is a really good map for Element Mystic, and we called out, and we saw the strengths that we expected, and they delivered in full, both far play and widow play. But also, this is Runaway's map choice. Why in the world would Runaway bring Element Mystic here? That's the thing that's perplexing me on further review. I don't have an answer. I do not have an answer for you, CP, unfortunately. Hisu and Exe are going to roll out on the same thing once again. Hisu is going to have to just dominate Exe on this uh, on this first push. Remember how long Element Mystic were able to hold Runaway here for around two minutes. Such a good map for Exe. And yes, the, the, the question does stand. Why did they go to this map? Nice pick so far, though. Onto MCD. Very good start. But Lee Jae Gong in a lot of trouble. Yaki taking the fire of far right now. Sparkle already getting more space in his own airspace. Then Runaway is able to clear out the first time around, but the 5v5 battle continuing. Exe, room to work with that spawn. Yaki is down, and EM has done a much better job dealing with the spawn pressure than Runaway did just a round ago. Exe just hiding in spawn too. Look at that shot on Hisu too. Just dominating this Widow versus Widow. i got to say, I've got a feeling Runaway are going to have to go dive here. they, they got to go Genji Tracer, something along those lines, because you are losing the duel, Hisu. It is... The Widow versus Widow, probably like four to two in Exe's favor currently. And now Exe gets a lot of space to set up. And that's the most important thing for the Widowmaker to do. Set up a sight line. Make sure the tanks are more than safe moving through this choke point. Hisu's going to come back with the rest of his team. Sparkle now again on the Genji. Streaky hero, yes. But he's making it work, ZP. I don't really know if Genji is a play here. They have enough time that they can still pivot if it doesn't work out, but I, it's a little bit risky for how Runaway has played around it. However, given that they're running the Widow, all he needs to do, get back. Pressure, he's soon, he's down! XC does the job for Sparkle, and now Sparkle doesn't have to worry about the Widow, can just focus on the main line. The Resurrection, though, up and over. XC, really good positioning. Drawing the attention away here as this is going in. And this is opening up the rest of EM to opportunities. They're looking at Exe, but they're not looking at Sparkle. They're not looking at Sparkle at all. And they can just run to the front line. He's going to get nanoed as well. ZP straight to the back. Yaki's in trouble. Yaki, the first to fall. Sparkle, though, might not be done yet. 66% and climbing towards Blade. Finds Lee Jae Gon. Might not Sparkle. even eat the Blade here. Sparkle with three. A Blade. Unnecessary. Exe provides a distraction. Sparkle provides the follow through. It's going to be EM evening up the series two to two. And we oh, got a There's the Blade. The style points right at the end. Element Mystic fist bumps all around. Runaway look completely shook by Exe's Widow. Hisu was losing the duels time and time again. That prompted the Diva to try and check him. What happened? Oh, there's no Diva in front of this Orisa. I guess we just push forward through the shield to stop this Orisa from doing all of anything. They isolate her and then guess what happens? Because Exe wins the duel, the Diva's then split between two things. He has to then go back to his tanks and Exe gets an even better position. Element Mystic win the map. And they are tied in the series. Absolute domination coming in from Element Mystic. And what more can you expect? We talk about the strength of Exe, a Widow player without peer. We talk about the strength of Sparkle, someone who really likes going between Genji and Farah in particular in this meta. And Havana first plays to both of their strengths, their jaws. Runaway, I think, made a very ill mistake bringing it to Havana. They got to choose the map once again. They got to decide where they really want to take it. Because Exe once more can be subbed out. Can be subbed out to Doha, but I definitely wouldn't at this point. We did bring it up at the very start of that map that we think Exe's just going to stay in permanently. I don't see a world now where they bring Doha in, especially when he's on fire with Widow like this. Sometimes you just got to leave the hot hand in. It's what I would do in the situation, but is that what Element Mystic is going to do? We'll find out after the break.
We started the day, we thought the brooms might be coming out runaway. Looked unstoppable. However, Element Mystic, they've picked themselves up off the ground and they have fought their way back in. One way or another, it's not going to be an easy road for whoever a champion might be. No, it definitely won't be an easy road. And Doha being subbed out seems like uh, the the key tool that they needed. XZ coming in on the Widowmaker, showing what he is showing everybody what everybody what he's made of on Havana, just dominating. And then we had Sparkle as well. He was on fire. He didn't really want to play it. We all knew he wanted to press H and switch to Genji. He did and cleaned up. They're looking extremely strong. However, ZP, we are going into Nepal, and this was the map that. Runaway did uh, face Element Mystic again uh, against in this season, and they did manage to win rather handily. Mind you, it did go to three rounds, but they did look uh, did look rather one-sided. But, wow, okay, we are seeing XZ coming back in. Doha did play on this map as well when they faced in the regular season. They did end up losing it and the series. So we'll have to say and wait and find out how this one plays out. Well, I think what we're seeing here is an admission from Element Mystic that they do not intend to run Widow. As we move into Nepal, it's not going to be part of their game plan. And, you know, the interesting thing, you talk about the regular season, it matters, but at the same point, it doesn't matter because the meta was just wildly different. It was the last era, the one last ride of the era where you could still run 3-3. Things have changed here, and that's putting it mildly. And you have to think that with Doha in, it means two things. One. They probably want potentially run him on Doom here in Nepal, which would make a lot of sense. And it's probably going to be swaps between, say, Doom and Sombra, but no Widow. Yeah, Nepal isn't really known for its Widow. You can play it on uh, things like Sanctum. It's quite nice sightlines, but the problem is you are do fairly easily. Same on Shrine, really kind of the same tale. There are, there are a couple of places where to make it can set up, but it's more point-centric. You want to fight on the point more often than not. It's not somewhere like uh, Lighthouse, for example, where you don't have to necessarily fight on the point. You can just control the open. Speaking of open places, the venue looking, once again, rather crisp. You can see them all back in their booths. It does, uh, I'm going to say it again, it does very much remind me of Apex. It's quite a <laughs> sight to see. All the fans coming out with the with the ones as well, uh, featuring Runaway and Element Mystic, which I need to obtain, by the way. Someone hit me up. I'd, I'd be rather gracious if you could do that. Uh, the, the free loot, uh, you know, call out. It's, it's a classic one. Though. It's <laughs> one that I respect. Uh, as someone that enjoys selling out quite a bit. I mean, I sell shamelessly, and I don't even get guaranteed loot as a result. But that just might mean I'm bad at it. But we're getting into game. We'll talk about the venue more later. And we'll see if Runaway can reverse their fortune here on Nepal. What's undoubtedly going to be a crucial map five. That it will be. We are going to see Sombra. I, I can almost guarantee it. Or maybe a little bit of Doomfist. There you go. Doha hover in the Doom. Of course, they can change. Next couple of seconds. It depends how Runaway want to run this too. We are on Sanctum. So it can be very much more a Roadhog Arisa kind of style play. Or we can see a little bit of dive as well. Just isolate the back line and then kind of roll on from there. A couple of seconds till we roll out those ZP. The maze are going to be critical though. There's, there's no way you don't run away the May on this map, especially as how prominent May has been. And the best counter to May, more often than not, it feels like just run your own May. Wall the May off, then you win. You kill the May, they have a lot less control and a lot less damage as well. But you know what one of the best counters Reaper is here? McCree, run away. They did their homework. They're expecting the May Sombra in from Elvis Mystic. And Isu and McCree can be a big deal here. It can give QOQ a little more protection on Hog. The first fight already underway. And they drop the Immortality Field really quickly under pressure. Bodes well from Mystic. They heal the Immortality Field. They go in a little bit more aggressively. QOQ already down. Heavily focus fired. And even with the Bionade from Gangnam Jin, it's not going to be nearly enough. And EM, a little bit better at a straight up fight here, Jaws, if it can dive in like that. A little bit better indeed. You press W. What happens when you press W, ZP? You have to press one more key on your keyboard. Well, on your mouse, sorry. It's M1, and they end up winning that one rather easily. McCree only has one flashbang. He can't stun them all. And Doha, as soon as he spots that one, he's heading straight for the McCree. You have to be pretty unlucky to get domed a couple of times. There's going to be a rotation here, but they're going to have to watch out for Yucky. He can wall them off as they do enter the point, and you've got to watch out for Unique as well. Very famous map for the boops into the hole. Now, Runaway, they're going to have to play a more poking style here. Element Mystic, if they can dive in the Runaway as a full team, it's going to be very hard for them to deal with it. But Doha, he was so far forward, Jaws down immediately. Runaway, working with a man advantage here. It's going to be a lot of room for Hisu to get to the flank. EM 
trying to shut down the corridor. Dive in for away, gets in, but they don't have the personnel for it. They lose Sparkle and run away. About to quickly flip the point. Yeah, not only on top of that, they comes down to the supports once again. EJ gone. He put down the immortality field. Who's focused in that immortality field, DP? I'll give you a very, very quick answer. Nobody. MCD used the coalescence. It was placed in such a way that you'd have to kind of obfuscate your vision of your own supports getting healing to try and take it out. And as soon as that did happen, you're going to die. That immortality field has so much health that it's almost impossible to take down unless you're perma-focusing it if you're the Reaper or the May. What happened? They didn't. The rest of Runner were able to survive. At least Element Mystic are gaining a lot more free time here by staggering themselves onto the point. Honestly, though, I don't know if worth. Because, yes, they were throwing themselves onto the point, but there is no chance of getting any damage of any significant sort there. And they've fully charged up Runaway on a map that is, frankly, notoriously hard to retake. But what ults do they have? That is the question. What ults can they use to kind of stop Sparkle going off with this Blizzard? You got Yaki. You could try and use the Counter Blizzard here, but they might not if you need to. Runaway have to jump on. No, Element Mystic have to jump on to Runaway to try and do anything. Both Superchargers have been used. Now is the time to strike for Sparkle. Looking for key pickoffs on the play. The key part here is my time for the Hanzo. You don't want to take this random fight. Meatball, Element Mystic, they very much do. The bomb, though, to the side. Catches Hisu. Takes down the immortality field and supercharger and toe. And Element Mystic, they just stick to the point, And the bomb buys them more than enough space. Yeah, it does. More than enough space and time. These comps are very hard to kind of clear out unless you do that. You need group in the Arista off the edge. Gets them a lot of self-free ult charge as well when you do that. But it, you buy time. You buy space. Yes. Element Mystic are probably going to be uh, in one fight territory now. 75%. You wouldn't normally say so. You'd say maybe one to two. But with these comps dying so quickly, it's one. 80% now online. Run away through everything and the kitchen sink out that fight. And Element Mystic have a coalescence to fall back on. That's so much pressure on the back line and front. He's just going to have to be so careful here. If he gets caught out, it's basically all over. Hisu coming in from the flank and Runaway trying to recover from a Grease-esque economic crash. Because as you say, they invested everything. Meanwhile, Element Mystic, they just dive in. Hisu went for the flank and they just realized we can go straight in. We can just fight you directly in the choke, but they don't get the ball through they're looking for. It's not necessarily clean. In overtime now, Runaway got QOQ back over to the point and they're about to take it. How did this happen? Gangnam Jin was able to take out Doha so quickly. He used the ult. I heard the sound line and instantly the Zen comes up big, clicks his head. Doha ends up going down and what looked like an element mystic favored fight completely fifth around. Gangnam Jin coming up super clutch. MCD's coalescence was almost a non-factor as well. Runaway are going to have ults for this next fight. They've got the immortality field as well as the hand matrix coming out from Lee Gong. They also have that blizzard. Sparkle, again, going to have to come up clutch. Use it a little bit later. Hopefully they can sustain through Yuckies. But this is one fight territory for Runaway. Goes down. Hisu strikes. The poking from the Hanzo finally lands its mark. Giving Runaway a key advantage as the fight takes off. Joshua Mag though. Already dealt with EM trying to fight back. The Blizzard is their key. But I don't think they have the power anymore. The counter dragon in from Runaway. And Runaway off to a real good start here on Nepal. Round one's going to be theirs. How have they done this? Element Mystic looks so good. ZP, so good. They had Blizzard. They had Coalescence. They had Reaper ult as well in the previous fight to that one. Yet it just came down to the clutchness of Gangnam Jin. The clutchness of it. Actually, not just Gangnam Jin. The entirety of Runaway. Unbelievable turnaround. And I've got to bring it back to the mental state of Element Mystic and specifically Doha. If I was in that position, my mental would not be in a very good place. I've been subbed out for Eggsy. Eggsy has popped off. And now I've been subbed back in and we lose a crucial fight with ult advantage. I would not be feeling pretty good right now. It's going to have to take a lot in, um, in Doha to really keep himself in this game. We are going to go on to Shrine. He's just teleporting people up though. Not sure he's going to stay on the sim. No, he switches back onto the hands though. Quick swap coming out, and I mean, Doha, you just gotta put it out of your mind. And now there's gonna be a change up for Doha onto the Doom Fist. It's Doom Genji dive, probably the most impressive dive variant you can have. And already, Elf Mystic, well, even the Hanbin just got chunked. QoQ was having none of it, immediately rejecting the back. Magdo falling, EM not backing off. All in the immortality field. It just 
keeps one away alive and lets one away back out. They punish Doha. Doha's a little bit deep. The DPS duo is down, and Runaway can just bring this pain train right back over to the point. So unbelievable control. That looks so good as well from Unique. It's super unfortunate he got caught out there, but he managed to boot Takiyaki off of the edge. As soon as that happens, you're like, wow, we, win. we basically win this fight. They got no main tank, but no. Doha overcommitted, disrespected Yaki. Wall went up, like you said, instantly taken care of. And Runaway now control the field. They've got Orisa on board. They're going to have to rely on a big pickoff onto Lee J. Gong and Gangnam Jin to end this fight. If they can't really pick off those sparkling down, who's working on the blade? Hoppin, though, immediately down the front line, just evaporated. They just got snapped out of reality. They don't feel very good, John. Oh, they do. I'm not sure they do. Doha not feeling very good either. He's going to go down instantly and run away with perfect control. How do you deal with Lee Jae Gon on this Baptiste? Baptiste has been such a crazy addition to the game because his immortality field brings so much value to the field. You plop that down, it's another target you have to deal with. And there's not much focus fire from Element Mystic. Not when you have to get around all these shields as well, Z. There's a lot of focus fire though from Elf Hardaway, I'll tell you that much. Sabrina takes a quick look at Hoppin. If you blink, you're gonna miss his health bar just evaporating. But this time, they swap targets midway. They punish Sparkle, who is in the back. Runaways, focus fire, laser, guided right now. This is unreal. That was, that was unbelievable again. Lee J going in the back line with Gangnam Jin. ZP, what happens when a Doomfist dives you? Well, I put down the Immortality Fields. Gangnam Jin was more than safe. And Doha once again committed his whole body to the back line. Immortality Field went down. You saw him dive in. And he was like, what are you doing? Like, I'm right here. Kill me instead, please. Like, I'm open. And Lee J Gong and Gangnam Jin were more than okay. Sparkle has played, though, and Doha finds an initial pick. This has to be the time for EM. If they don't get here, they're not going to get it all. Takiyaki, the falls. The focus fire onto the tanks. It's a bad time to get EM tanks. Sparkle brings up the blade, has the barrier. Now's the time. Has one looking for more. Chasing down Lee Jae Gong. Cuts him on down. But this has been torturous for EM. And I mean, if, if you're a tank for EM, what do you do right now? It is almost impossible to do anything. Once again, Diva, Winston, very bad at taking out all mentality fields. Runaway are now on 99%, and Element Mystic have to hold this for the whole hundo. Otherwise, oh. Runaway are just going to take this map and put themselves on match point. The pressure is mounting on Element Mystic. The pressure is mounting on Doha as well. He came in for the savior of this map to try and help Element Mystic take control. He didn't do so hot before, but he's going to have to turn up to 11. They're going to go for their initial engagement. A coalescence is coming through from MCD. Coalescence leads the way. EM with a much better early engagement and also working with Defender's Advantage Jaws for the first time here in the round where when you're running something that's focused on early engages, it kind of helps when you know when everyone's going to be heading through the same choke. <laughs> it's your dream, right? It's your dream if you're Doha as well. You get the uppercut, everybody falls off the edge. I mean, Runaway can play around with these fights just a little bit. Uh, their, their comp is completely opposite of what was happening last uh, round. Their comp is going to die rather fast because of the hero picks on the side of Element Mystic, so the resets are rather quick. Sparkle has the um, has the blade, though, and Hubbin has bomb. It could be used in conjunction to isolate targets for Sparkle to cut down. And they force out the blade immediately. Gangnam Jin sees the blade coming on in. The transcendence in response. Hoppin though gets a little bit of revenge. The bomb to the top deals with Mag. Oh, wait, oh, I got the flip. Where do I just went directly to the points? And even though they're gonna lose the fight here, Jaws that like, almost buys them a full extra fight just off time alone. Yeah, that was pretty insane. There was a bit of an overcommittal there by Runaway, like you said, just foregoing the point. But Element Mystic still. They used a whole bunch in that fight. Doha has got his ult. Unique's gonna have his. MCD, most definitely. Lee Jae Gon, though, if he surprises Element Mystic here with a quick and clean kill using the Ant Matrix, it could be all over. He's used Dead Eye as well. He's gonna do one bazillion damage through that window. It's all gonna be about Hisu getting an ult on. Noha gets hooked on in, has the Meteor Strike in reserve, and now I think he's gonna use it to get away. Meanwhile, Hisu, Dead Eye up, down he goes! Doha with the punish. And this is looking a lot better for EM. 99 to 99. But run away, it might as well be a zero. They can't get anyone back onto points. And that is a comeback and then some for EM. And you talked about it in the last round, Jaws. You said, what does Doha do? What is the response? And even though the very beginning of the round was a little bit tough, Doha's follow through towards the end of the round was magnificent. And as a result, EM fights into the third round.
the pressure was mounting on Doha. The pressure was mounting on Element Mystic to try and win this game. Like you said, Doha actually popped the last half of that map. It is a lot easier for defenders, and especially Doomfist on the defense as well. Wait for the runaway engagement. Go down with a P4's elbow. Get an uppercut and an insta-kill. He wasn't finding those insta-kills, but he was buying enough space pressure and time for the rest of, run uh, for the rest of Element Mystic to pop off. We're going to go on to Village as our last map. No maze in sight. We're going a little bit more old school, ZP. Both teams running incredibly highly aggressive compositions. Both Winston's in immediately. And Element Mystic going to be ahead when the dust clears. Don't the immediate pick on the Lee J gone. Six on five. And CDO E down on the other side. It's a bit of a brawl here between the two, but this is something that Sparkle thrives in. Able to find Mag on the other end. And Element Mystic beating Runaway at a game that they are very comfortable in. You gotta say, as soon as your main healer falls, uh, the fight's almost over because you have to either kill them almost instantly or survive long enough for that main healer to get back. It didn't matter because not only is uh, Doha basically free to do what he wants because he too can't get a hack off because of all the damage that's coming in, interrupting those hacks, but Yaki's not gonna be able to deal with him either. This is just so good from Element Mystic right now. Control is perfect. And given to this, he's though, able to punish Doha. You play wow. the over, you're looking for the key hacks. He's able to find it there. Sparkle ends up without a lot of help. Falls in the same note. And run away. Not only Joss, are they going to get control of the point, but they're going to have the EP up to the next. I don't know about the coalescence from Elemist. They really think they can win this. Sparkle's coming back with Blade ZP. Maybe they still commit, but they're also low. They need to be able to reconvene as a group. But he still has the EP, like you said. Well, guess what? They got down two. The EMP now blade. might not be a sure thing. Hisu still uses it, but the blade cuts him on down. The EMP was late. Hisu not expecting the pressure. Bag though, angry about the entire situation. Buying time here, just beats up Unique in the corner. And run away. Still able to contest. Yaki coming back on over. Pulse bomb charged up. Good to go. Who's it going to go on to? Connect. Takes the oh. fight. This is unbelievable. How is this fight still going? This is ridiculous and runaway. This is perfect for them. They're buying so much time. They're getting 3% right now. Yaki is going to be able to survive for so long. Not for a long ahead of I say that cast to cast unlucky. He does get raced out by Sparkle. Sparkle's going to be able to clean the rest up here, it feels like, but they're still buying time. Runaway have basically had 30 plus 3% on the board. Element Mystic still buying for control. They eventually get the flip and have ults to spare. But what a scrappy engagement. I didn't think there was any way Sparkle comes back in with a blade. Uh, uh, knowing that Hisu probably has the EMP. He did it. He made it work. Clutch factor from Sparkle. They're on 54 to 40% on Element Mystic side. But EM have ticks on the board. Sparkle's almost got another blade. Sparkle, serious adaptability towards the end. Yaki though, another pulse bomb. Things ready to blow here. Once more, both teams throwing each other at one more time, Doha down immediately. Sparkle with the blade. The bomb up on the top, just going for the diva. Oh! Hiding in the corner. Not quite able to finish it off. And meanwhile, the bomb comes up. It finds back on the other side. Yaki, special delivery. But is it going to be enough? Element Mystic still fighting tooth and nail, still with the tools to delay. And Hisu, you might have the EMP in reserve, but do you want to use it right now? Probably not. They just need a quick and clean incision to try and take out Hisu, but it's just not working. Element Mystic can't really find the kill, but again, it doesn't really matter in some senses. You don't kill the Sombra, whatever. You make her translocate, that's perfect. She can't set up for the EMP, which means she can't get it on the back line, which means Unique and MCD are way safer than you'd expect them to be. Element Mystic are now one fight territory. One fight territory, but guess what? There's the beat, and here comes EMP. EMP strikes four. Yaki taking down Unique immediately there on the fall through. The EMP jaws, just too good coming in from Hisu. It's a fall through they needed. Promise for Runaway. That's just one fight, and they still need about two more. Yeah, Element Mystic throw a lot into that fight as well, but what they got coming up is the most important ultimate for Element Mystic so far on this map, and it's the Blade. Unique may have used his beat to save him there, but he almost forced his he to use the EMP. It's like, hey, guess what? We have Overshield. Do you know what EMP's really good at doing? Well, stripping that Overshield. He uses that, and now Sparkle's a little bit more free. Like, what a stick! Yaki, what a way to make space for Runaway. If we said it was two fight territory before Jaws, guess what? It's just one. That's the power of a well-placed bomb. Unbelievable. And now Runaway, they're sitting on a Coalescence 2. So they can now actually try and kite away from Sparkle using this and using the speed up from Lee Gone. It's all about this entrance Sparkle. He has to make it perfect. Dr. J 
Jin with the Coalescent. Sparkle to the back. Got Hisu immediately. The blade. It's cut deep. And all the Mystic ready for more. All six still up. Runaway working at this man. Jem CD though. Cut. Now down the source of healing. Five on five. Makayaki. Primal Rage into the back. Sparkle. Room to work with. Doa right there with him. And no! Oh! Unbelievable. They got off the point. Runaway takes the map. Oh my god. Lee Jae Kwon pointed to himself like, that was me, baby, all me. I forced him off the point. For the second time in this series, we've had a C9 run away, take the map, and put themselves on match point to win the series. Everybody's looking a little bit shook. They still can't believe it has happened. What a map for Runaway to win. Doha comes back in. He is rattled right now. Element Mystic need to decide how they're going to attack this next map. They do have choice, of course. What an unbelievable end in a fight that, frankly, EM could have brought back. It was looking promising. The problem is, Overwatch is an objective-based game, and sometimes you lose sight of that in the most critical of moments. But we have ourselves a series. Runaway, one map away from being champions once more. Element Mystic on the verge of being eliminated, but they still have time, they still have opportunity. We're gonna take a quick break. When we come back, we will see if EM can do that. Overwatch is an objective-based game. A lesson that EM might be taking a little bit hard right now after the ending to Nepal were run away in what was an incredibly close team battle ends up winning with EM getting off the point. Jaws, that was so close. It's just an unbelievable map. And now we are match point situation. Element Mystic have brought in Doha. He's been looking good. They want to continue this. He had a few slip-ups. He had a few hiccups. He isolated himself a couple of times. There was points where he's been overextending, but his play on the Doomfist, his, uh, just his mechanical skill, of course, is extremely good, but it is looking way sharper than it has been. It does, however, look like Exe is coming back in, and we spoke about it before. This is, um, this is going to be a Widow map i can imagine element mystics map choice of course but runaway they're a match point zp this is all in their hands to sink the file nail in the coffin and become champion of korean contenders once again and we're in the king's row and that's i think really interesting now that xe is going to be in the lineup because you would think for what doe has been playing for playing doomfist sombra as sort of the play style with a bit of reaper mixed in that King's Row would be more the map that you would be running Doha on. Instead, the, the whether Doha's in or out has been more dependent on is it a control map or not. This is very interesting. It's not that you can't run Widow on King's Row, but I argue that Widow really drops in effectiveness once you get beyond the very first point. So I, right now, if you're runaway looking at this, I almost think you have to assume there's going to be a Widow on point A. I don't think it's the worst map for Widowmaker. Point two, most definitely, if you can get your team to hold the uh, the sight lines for you. A little bit more difficult to run the, the Widowmaker, of course, on there, on the street space, but I think it's the worst thing in the world, ZP. Plus, it's something that we talked a little bit earlier on, is do you want a guy that can play um, X hero, 10 out of 10, but the rest of his heroes maybe like five or six out of 10, or do you want the across the board eight to nine out of tens. You probably want the eight to nine out of tens on a map that can be rather variable. And I think XE brings that to the table. I mean, Widowmaker, yes, you can run it on first, maybe on the defense, but definitely on the offense, if you can set, if you can get your team to set up. King's Row is the map that they chose as well. So they've definitely got a game plan in mind coming into it. It won't be as crazy dive though, where I don't think we're gonna be seeing the Genji Doomfist dive of any sort. In fact, I don't think we'll be seeing XE on Doom at all, so it will be a more restrained EM compared to their just fully chaotic Berserk 
identity that we've been seeing from them on control. And instead right now, it's looking like they'd be looking more towards double projectile of the Farah Hanzo variant. And it makes sense, given the strengths of the XE and Sparkle. Meanwhile, for Runaway Jaws, they're going to be heading out here on the May Hanzo. And also, very, very good for control here in King's Row. It's been working out for them so far. I mean, why not run it once again? Hanzo especially. You can get so much value with the Hanzo too, just on that Sonic Arrow. I think people sometimes uh, just don't understand the value of Sonic Arrow, what it can do, especially on maps like King's Row, where there are a couple of entrances and you can use something like a speed boost to speed through through his hotel or speed boost up onto the high ground. Use that Sonic Arrow, get a lot of information. I think it's exactly what XE is going to do right now. Sonic Arrow at the top. And just dive to on it. Everybody. <laughs> It's like, hey, drop the Sonic Arrows, you gotta go back to spawn. No, dive in deeper. It's the most dramatic Hollywood of ways. Yoki already took quite a bit of fire, one away. Holding your final statue, the hook connects! Oh. Sexy down! That was a little punishing. That was a little painful. That were Matrix looks like it landed, and I'd be here myself if I was having him right now, but it is what it is. You're going to have to go once again. Double projectile, I don't think it's too bad either. Um, unless you're Sparkle, and uh, Hisu taking him out of the air. Faros are not having a good day at all, versus Hanzo, apparently, especially Hisu's Hanzo. The arrow is greater than the rocket. What more can you say? It's not usually a thing, but it is a thing here. Hanzo's elevating their anti air tech. Gangnam Jin somehow finds MCD in the interlude. And Element Mystic, every time they move in, someone gets picked off. Runaway has been just ferociously punishing them on every rotation. And down goes Yumi. Run the Jin. What? Again with the nade? Okay, it looks like he got hit with an arrow first and the nade finished him off. Going on Jim, find himself a nice little two-piece on both supports. I mean, QQ's hog has been pretty pog as well. I mean, his hooks have been just so stellar. His ability to um, combo them with the hole, of course, is kind of a standard nowadays. It's not anything too flashy or too special, but his control over the hog has just been so perfect. Of course, we've already seen it so far. Another May's one. He's going to do so much work here. And another one! As I say at ZP, he's kind of putting on a showcase right now. QOQ coming in when Runaway needs it most. And don't forget, this is match point for Runaway. If they can hold off Melvin Mystic for two minutes, the title might be as good as and QOQ does it again. What? Unbelievable. This is ridiculous. QOQ, unbelievable hooks from around the corner. Like, how do you even counter that? There's not much apart from Defense Matrix, but that's coming out every time. But just they're either out of range or they get LOS ever so slightly. Disaster for Melvin Mystic, who only have two minutes left. It is a Roadhog world and they don't want to live in it, is what has been going on here. Hisu, Dragon, Freddy, dropping it for Finazoning, forcing Orisa just to move in response. Overall though, it's Hisu just a film Mystic. Now they're gonna drop the Supercharger. They're gonna try and take some control of the fight. Sparkle to the back, the Mirage is in. Oh no, I think it's denial. Double. They got two. Complete denial. Run away though, still in it. QOQ falls, they don't have to worry about the hooks anymore. And run away while still fighting here, Jaws. They're wounded. They're likely going to have to put up a little bit of response here. But that's the Blizzard. They're looking to delay. Runaway's making the most out of a tough situation. MCD playing it really aggressive as well. They got that supercharger down. Hubbins is driving to go for the assassination, but doesn't quite find it. In fact, finds himself a Hanzo in the back line. And a bit Mystic moving on to the point now, ZP, with ult. EM back onto the point, and QQ swapped. Here on the Hammond, the Terror of Hooks is gone, but okay, it's just a little bit of delay. It's like enough people on the box of that Hobbit. Deals with the immortality field. Sparkle on the Doom Swap. Gets a good value there as well. And Elder Mystic able to secure their prize at point A, but they did give up a lot of time, Jaws. Three minutes and some change to get point A. Yeah, that's uh, pretty punishing. Remember, it took them really two minutes to actually form a semblance of a fight. Ganon Jim a little bit in trouble, but he's going to be all good. Not to worry about him. He soon gets a rather fast respawn as well. Resetting himself with the payload. Three minutes plus QRQ and Max Hog now in a very interesting position in the street space. He's taking a little bit too much damage here, but XE, I'm not too surprised to see him switch over to the Reaper at all. You've got to deal with QOQ somehow. You can follow up on those hooks as well if you're the Reaper. Plus, you can avoid them with a the shift as well. They are going to set up rather easily here. QOQ looking for hooks. Meanwhile, Sparkle diving in, trying to put some pressure on QOQ, but meanwhile, Lee Gone deals with XE. The, just the bloodthirstiness of the supports in the back, absolutely unrivaled from Runaway relative to almost any other team. And anytime Runaway needs a boost, Lee Gone is there. Yeah, no 
uh, stagger on the diva too. Pretty disastrous uh -oh. if you're hubbing. Uh oh. That sleep dart landing as well. Oh dear, just put him out of his misery. They're gonna be able to stall for so long here, just freezing him ever so slightly, not doing the maximum amount of damage to kill him in order to slow his walking speed down. And they're gonna wall him off as well. He eventually falls, but ZP, that was a good almost 40 seconds of stall if you count the setup time coming up for this next fight. Only two minutes left for Element Mystic. This is not much time to get through point B where they need at least two more fights. They're looking at an overtime finish here and XE on the flank. The, the Reaper flank here, they're banking a lot on it. Hasn't been spot yet. They're going for the double zone. Oh no! The flaw from his own team almost ruins the outcome of that. Only Hisu is caught. Element Mystic goes for the spot QQ. He's able to get away. He's out Sparkle and I think Sparkle can sabotage his own team. That's not what you want to see. Kind of got owned, just like, okay, so we're going for the Death Blossom at the back. Wait, that wall. In some senses, I think that wasn't actually too bad. This slag is going to be pretty big once again on the Baby Diva. He gets walled off once more. Haven eventually gets punished. One minute and 20 seconds left, but I don't think that wall was necessarily that bad because they managed to isolate the, the Hanzo. It's just the Immortality Field, again, was way too strong. It was ridiculous how much value that got off, regardless of that wall actually falling or not. The Reaper's not going to do that much damage from range to help destroy the Immortality Field to land them with the kills. And now, with a minute online, Element Mystic have not got it that far at all. They barely pushed it around the side. Balls over the top. Final minute for Element Mystic here on point B. XC moving forward. The charge is dropped by Run Away. Run Away in real trouble. The bomb goes off, gets two. And Element Mystic finally able to get some traction here on point B. But uh, Run Away could potentially come back out for a last test. Yeah, the biggest tool that Element Mystic have now to deny that is going to be that Blizzard. And mixed with the Coalescence as well, potentially. Unreal amount of pressure and damage. Li Gong has got the uh, Ant Matrix as well. So again, Runaway can kind of play around that. But I think Element Mystic honestly have too much here in order to, def uh, to defend. Runaway are going to use it, but instantly gets walled off. That's going to be a free payload touch. It is indeed. They do manage to get the point. Runaway commit a lot here as well in, in, in terms of the how much bodies they're throwing at the payload. But they're able to scurry away rather fast. They just Sparkle need to not crumble. The Blizzard moving on in and Element Mystic there on the follow through. This is rough runaway. They just need to resettle. A minute 20 left and there is a few technical difficulties going on the feed, but we're just, this is full radio cast now, Jaws, while we wait for it to come back online. Uh, very good, very good. Exit is going to have the Death Blossom online from the high ground. Yaki has got that Blizzard. So Legion Gang was also onto the high ground from across the way. So he's going to be able to at least spot out Exy. Exy does have the Death Blossom though. A big freeze onto the Diva. A big freeze onto the Arisa is going to be what they need. Yaki dropping the Blizzard onto the point. Meanwhile, Exy waiting in the wings. Mag already down. Elven Mystic waiting for the finish here on top. They drop the beat. Now it's time to go. Elven Mystic moving forward. The Death Blossom dropped into the back. Just spins directly into Legion Gang. And Exy right on top of the spawn door, finds Hisu, run away, falling bit by bit, piece by piece, and Ole Mystic might be finishing with time yet. Yeah, 30 seconds is in the time bank right now. They just need to clear Mag off the payload, a boop into the self-destruct's pretty good. Nice little boop there as well from Legion Gone. Doesn't quite find anybody, but they should be able to end it right here, right now. Trace is still stalling for some extra time, even Yaki, but he gets booped away. They managed to complete which is the important thing. Regardless of the time, it's still very good for the mentality of everybody going in as well. They know that there are extra rounds on the board as they had time in their time bank left. Run well, away, we you've got to feel good with that defense though. We are going to take a quick break to restore our sync, to restore the feed. As much as radio is great, audio or video, just a little bit better. Be back soon.
The Age of Radio is over. It came back for only a short time. That's how quick cycles are in entertainment today. And we are back in. Elven Mystic, a valiant last stand. They finish with time remaining. And now Jaws begins to see how Runaway responds. 15 seconds though, not the biggest time bank in the world, but it is Runaway attacking, of course. Took Element Mystic two minutes and a little bit to actually crack the defense. Now Element Mystic setting up with the Maid. They have got XD as well. I like this uh, adaptation. Maybe expecting the, the fire coming out from Runaway. The Sparkle just holding so far up here as well. XD with the flank. Off the left hand side. Runaway though, they've done too much damage here, Jaws. This is gonna be a very successful attack. Isu got to the back line, just so much damage from a Hanzo with a good sight line. Isu has been on fire this entire series on this Hanzo specifically, taking out Fares, just taking out anybody that stands in him and Runaway's way. They're gonna be able to cap this payload in rather decent time for King's Road, especially on these comps. They're, they are comps that take a while to die, so having a very quick team wipe like that is gonna be such a benefit moving forward. It does give the element missing though, ZP, a lot of time to actually set up on the streets phase, so they're not gonna forego this archway just yet as the cart does eventually unlock and then start rolling. Still, though, it's a hole that Elven Mystic needs to dig themselves out of. This might be the first shovel stroke. Moving forward, Mag QQ down. Run away, though. Plenty of time, just five whole minutes here for point B. And we'll see if EM can have a, just as good of a chokehold as Runaway did just a round ago. Now, oh, he's now finally getting checked up on the high ground. He's gonna use the dragons as well. I mean, I don't know about that one. That was uh, a little bit suspicious. It didn't like, go for the Hulk combo as well, but the Dragons went up high, Hulk was down low. Supercharge used, though. This is really ambitious, going for the whole hog there, hoping to see if he can keep him alive. Yaki dropped towards the ball, but Hogbin, the bomb to the back, Mag, no recourse, immediately falling. I think that was way too aggressive from QOQ. Yeah, a little bit more so, I think. Uh, I think that's a bit of an understatement, to be honest, EP. Runaway now on the offense, uh, again, blowing a lot of ultimates here. Element Mystic doing the same thing. There's so many blizzards on the screen. It's like, okay, where do I look? And then both self-destructs are going off, or at least one of them is. And it's, it can be fairly confusing if you're a, a player kind of in the mix, kind of hoping not to get frozen, but you need to scurry for a barrier. Now, XD can just slide on the sidelines. He's got ult, but Window's going to unlock. Window open here from Runaway. Runaway trying to make some room. Element Mystic just hiding behind. He's a job of limiting impact of the amplification matrix. Isulu connects, gets MCD down. One good arrow to start out and sustain for Elven Mystic. It could be a whole lot worse. One away, moving forward, XZ over the top of Death Blossom takes down three. That is a big turnaround in from Elven Mystic. Unbelievable positioning from XZ. Oh my goodness, this is why you keep him in. Doha being subbed in for the control maybe in their game plan but exe regardless of him being in or out or in or out he's just been unbelievably impressive on whatever hero you can put him on if they sub him out again i've got some serious questions well, now run away going to try and release the dragon through the walls and try and spit everybody up element mystic they're just going to sidestep that not worried at all fc again from the sky dropping on down this side though gonna get a whole lot more yaki fight early em still maintaining control here at the king's rope point b choke he's getting one, the rest of Runaway still in a rough spot. XE that's some real trouble here with Pilot Diva. More so than you'd expect, <laughs> down to 12 HP, almost down. It's gonna be okay. ZP, hold your breath, it's gonna be fine. He's alive, let live for another day. He has got the healing from Unique and MCD coming in. But Runaway now, using that immortality field, just such good effect, getting so much damage and space in. XE's dead. XE done, they don't have to worry about the Reaper from the skies anymore. Runaway. Finally piercing through, but Jaws, it took him two and a half minutes to get through that first point B choke. Elven Mystic has fought their way back into this round. Yeah, that they have two minutes now on the board, though. And the problem with Runaway right now, they have got not, well, not very much time. The spawns are going to be fairly far away from them as well. So they actually favored the defense, uh, uh, the defense currently as they do move around this last corner but what they do have in their bank is a lot of ults they've got the blizzard and they're actually using supercharger early to gain more space supercharger up but it is pretty early here elven mystic are giving it a decent amount of respect but they are still gonna head out but it could be right into the blizzard i don't know if they got the weather warning as they move out here isu opening up for the dragon now it's time to go for the end but they're gonna be heading directly into the blizzard yaki not wasting any time drops on down it's not in at all xc went for the death blossom the power frozen in the middle 
and Elven Mystic, they just head directly into the setup from Runaway. That was just overwhelming. Shock's gonna get launched in as well. That window being used at near the end of the fight is just so much pressure coming through from Runaway. I'm not sure Element Mystic can actually sustain on this point. There's gonna be a beat to maybe, actually, maybe they can. Saying that, that beat just surged the forward. Well, it forces out the transcends nothing else. So even if they fail to get the point, they're getting equivalent exchange out of Runaway here, which can be just as important. They're buying time in the process of the fight, though. Still heading in Runaway's favor, but they built the Blizzard just in time! It might not be over yet. They freeze two in the back. They're looking for the fall through Diva, though. Heading to the back, but they end up with three, four! Elven Mystic! They actually have fought at back jaws. What a wonderful fight for EM! That is unbelievable. That looks so winnable for Runaway there. They had so much space. They haven't so much time. Lee Gong used that uh, application matrix right at the end as well to almost guarantee them the fight. But the walls coming out from Sparkle were so good. They're building on the Blizzard as well. QOQ gets a stagger of the lifetime, buying them an additional like 20 seconds or so. And now, speaking about 20 seconds, they've got that in their time bank. Yaki can come back with Blizzard. But this is going to be it. This is final fight here for Runaway to sink this into second point. Runaway, remember what they had. They had five minutes for point B, but they hit the iron wall at the choke. And a miracle hold from Elton Mystic at the end might have done it. However, the Blizzard is heading in one more time. Three seconds left to go. The bomb to the back. Elton Mystic able to get away from it, but Yaki not done yet. Pop the Blizzard deals with its counterpart. Six on five. Runaway. Struggling to stay in here on King's Row. Working with the advantage. DJ Gon is down. Five on five. XE in the back looking for any pickoff. But on the Mystic, slowly running meat or running out of meat on the point and run away, just swarming. Gotta mention as well, XE actually switched over to Widowmaker in this last final moments too. In that last fight, he felt Widowmaker was way more useful, getting a long sight line way quicker than many other heroes can do and be effective at that range as well. Problem is. Like you said there, ZP, there's no meat on the point. There's no players on the point. Reaper's so good at contesting. He has a shift and an invulnerability. He can move through people and get out of dodge rather quickly. Widow doesn't have that at all. And now he's reset his old bank, switching back to the Reaper. I gotta say, that is mostly on Exe switching to Widowmaker. He's using the back now, dealing so much damage. Well, I think you want to go at the barrier here. Elven Mystic, they go for the early barrier engage. They try and dive in. They get Isu, and it works out. The early barrier sets the tone and run away. Thrown back. In the final minute, we could be looking down the barrel of a final definitive map seven here, Jaws. What do we need to be able to get back? 40 seconds now remaining. Yaki, ha Yaki has ultimate. Potentially. 10% away, he's probably going to get it. QOQ also has self-destruct. A very, very hard self-destruct to get away from if he can plant it correctly in the middle of the straight going on to third. That is ideally the position you want to be in. Yaki is going to be in trouble, though. He already had to use the wall. XC down, Lee Jae gone. When you need a support elimination the most, he comes on through. Run away against the wall. Final 15 seconds. They're going to overtime no matter what. Blizzard up. And you just see there. Saw Diva fishing for the eat. It doesn't happen. Yaki almost into the pit. Keeps his composure. Run away. Really good spot here, Jaws. Because they held the Blizzard. They have it for what could be the final fight. OT is now here. You're right. They've got Blizzard. They've got Coalescence. They've got that beat as well. Element Mystic is going to come back with roughly the same, apart from Lee Jae Gong's uh, beat. He needs to be able to survive and potentially use this beat to actually negate a lot of that damage. Blizzard. It's up to him to survive this initial self destruct. Self destruct out. Run away. They drop the beat. They drop the Blizzard. It's cold on all fronts here. But run away. Just looking a little bit more durable here at the point. Yaki deals with the opposing bay. He's due with the blossom to the back and run away. They want to end this here and now, Jaws. They don't want a map seven. They don't want the drama. And they might just be giving themselves an extra round of King's Row, and they do it. One more round for each team. OT was there, and they managed to sink it in at the end. 15 seconds, remember, for Element Mystic. Head in hands for a lot of EM players as well. They know it was so winnable on that last point. They pushed Runaway to the brink of extinction there, and it could have been a tied series going into the final map. They now both get another chance to attack. Yaki and Hisu have just been so clean. Yaki's walls have been so good. His positioning of Blizzard has also been stellar. But... Exy jumping onto the Reaper. That is the person I think a lot of Element Mystic fans are looking towards right now as the saving grace for EM. 
and the potentially the cup lifter as well like he is the guy that element mystic need to look to in order to clutch this out his widowmaker pickup on second was rather questionable i do not believe that was a good pick he wanted to get back and cause major impact instantly but his reaper has just been so good stick on the reaper don't flex onto the widowmaker even if you're on fire with it the reaper is the better pick here i fully agree however i think going into that not only is it a little bit surprising for us to see him head out on the widow i think the idea was that'd be surprising the runaway where you're looking at things here you're not expecting widow someone gets picked that's the game he went for the gamble he lost but now we go in the extra rounds it's still winnable for em the map seven still potentially in sight it all comes down to this runaway attack here that was a very very good sonic arrow just revealing everybody from he's two you can kind of hear it as well if you've uh, ever seen it in your games. It's like a wubbing sound. Uh, so they know exactly when they've been discovered. Oh, well, QRQ might be in a little bit of trouble. Beautiful wall to kind of isolate him. Oh, he's so good. The wall was good enough. It bought enough time for Yaki to move in, find Unique. It ends up being a trade. It's five on five. Run away. Still moving forward into the point. On the Mystic. Down mobility. Down the Lucio. Lee Jae able to strike. Hisu he again finds the high ground. What? Gets the sight lines and run away. Makes it a quick point A, and this is looking real good for their odds to end this series in six. Gold's coming online as well. Element Mystic's fight ended so fast, they couldn't really get much. MCD is the closest to an ultimate, and that's the coalescence. Yaki could set up here extraordinarily well. You can see him trying to wall people off. They know exactly what Element Mystic are going to do. Their game plan of going through this ground, uh, this uh, low ground. But Husu is going to be able to set up now on the hands. Oh, so far away. And this is a big gamble that's being taken here. And we'll see if it pans out for Elma Mystic. They come in from the flank. Hisu has already adapted up to the side, high end. Diva already on him, but he's able to rotate around the hotel. Drops the dragon under pressure directly onto the payload. And it gets two! What mobility from Hisu to shake the pressure, drop the dragon, and run away. Still fighting on through. Yaki able to make the most of the opportunity. And run away gets to continue pushing things forward. That was the perfect start of the fight as well for EM. They took out both Lee Jae Gong and Gan Nan Jin. Both supports dead. No healing available apart from the minuscule amount of health that cart does give you. But they still managed to make it work. Like you said, Hisu got kind of dealt with there. But he jumped down to the low ground. It's like, whatever, Diva's there. If I can just scurry away. And with the help of Lee Jae Gong using that immortality field, is able to survive. Now Runaway can move through to second with the Blizzard in tow. Run away, looking to keep up the momentum. They sense the championship in sight. Element Mystic, they need to stop the bleeding. They need to stop it now. Yaki neutralizes the Reaper on top. Still has the Blizzard in reserve. Sparkle hasn't built it up quite yet. Both phase. Now a Blizzard. Xe goes for an early death loss, but doesn't get much before the Blizzard. Now both teams dropping Blizzard. Run away deeper into there as they deal with Sparkle. Hisu deals with the mirror, moves on forward. Run away is going to get point B. Unbelievable transcendence there from Gangnam Jin. Not only did he save his front line, he made sure Hisu could deal so much damage. Hisu has lifesteal on his weapons as well, just means he does even more and sustains even more against Runaway's onslaught. Runaway threw in Blizzard. They threw in co they didn't throw in Coalescence just yet, but they threw in Blizzard to try and deal with the back line. And Mad got frozen behind Shield, but he was safe. He had the transcendence at his front, and he had the rest of his team pressuring the front line. Element Mystic going in for a quick fight once again. Elma Mystic, they need to do something now. The bomb from Hanbin, it's been good in the past. It's going to be good now. Bag down. Exe with the punish. Runaway losing steam. Finally, the bleeding is stopped. But the damage to the patient might be mortal. Element Mystic crumbling on their defense. Runaway had one minute, but that one minute felt like 10 years. And Element Mystic is now their time to come back. They were rather emotional in the booth. We kind of scanned over their faces just not a moment ago, and we saw Cod people with head in hands. They knew they had this map. They knew they had it on point two of their first defense, and even point three as well. They knew that was a reality. They could have just set themselves on 3-3. It would have been match point for both teams, and the next map would decide it. But now Runaway, with such an incredible push near to point three, may have sealed their ticket to lift up that trophy. And a Mystic need a miracle on this last push. It's down to Exe. The fans are looking to him and his Reaper 
to do something. It's been popping off so far. He's hovering the hands over the time being, but it has been about Hisu on the other side for Runaway. Has just been dealing the killing blow more often than not to the backline and even to the DPS of Element Mystic to halt them in their tracks. The championship on the line for Element Mystic. What is in their way though is a nearly insurmountable mountain. They must have a brilliant attack, even better than what we just saw from Runaway a moment ago. If they want to merely stay in the series, force a map seven. Run away, meanwhile. If they have a defense as good as their first, the series is over and the championship is theirs. One pick is all that they require. QOQ has been so good at these hooks as well. Takiyaki gets naded in the front line. He should be okay. Because Runaway are backing off as they know Sparkle is a threat in the skies. Again, it's up to Hisu to try and deal with him. He's the real, only real person there to actually take him out. QOQ's in trouble though, and he ends up going down. So close to the health pack yet so far. However, Takiyaki fell. Gets caught out. Element Mystic was very committed on the dive. Final 30 seconds. Make enough space for the resurrection. EM in a better spot. All six up a little bit wounded. That's okay as long as no one falls into the flank. Yaki in on the flank is caught out. Sparkle just protecting his back like it's frozen. Goes oh, down. Move. Yaki able to win the fight. And now this is real dangerous. Final 15 seconds. Run away. Looking to put this one away. The crowd erupts as well in the background, and you know Runaway fans are fall behind Yaki right now. The perfect freeze, and now only 10 seconds remains. Final moment here, Runaway is another chance. It's going to be there. Mercy Chris comes to point, taking their time. It's him and on the point. He's going to come down. No mercy. Fog one by one, and it's all over. Runaway are your champions once more. What an unbelievable series from Runaway. This season was theirs. They got upset in season one against O2 Blast, who fell to Element Mystic in the finals. And they can lift the trophy once more. Just gotta be careful with the trophy there. And, you know, just all together, no opposing forces. Keep the trophy in one piece. And there it is. It's a team effort all the way. The coaching staff was in there at all times supportive runaway as a family and one that continually produces overwatch excellence and tonight was a night that adds to that history to that narrative regardless of the players and the team they weren't as successful as they wanted to be back in apex coming second is their highest placing both in season two and four but when it came to contend as a a new format to korea they were able to dominate in most seasons. It's season one curse, apparently. That, that That's the only thing that takes them down. <laughs> season one of 2018 and 19, they both fell in the third, fourth place. And other than that, two and threes, apparently, that, that's their miracle juice, right? They, they end up winning the seasons. You can see Flower Ven as emotional as ever. Stream is all about. Yeah, you've got to clear those off. They, they are a tripping <laughs> hazard. You've got to be a little bit more careful than that. But what a legacy for Runaway to build also. The Titans who were so great back in the GOAT Wait. era of... Um, uh oh, no. Okay. <laughs> this is, I'm a little bit worried here. This is dangerous. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of support there, but be careful. It's all I got to say. But they it's fine. a legacy. It's fine. <laughs> Marvin has survived. And Titans who so dominate in the Overwatch League and Runaway, they're quote-unquote not their not their uh, academy team, but they might as well be. They've just been so dominant over the past two years in contenders as well. And the dominance has been over multiple different metas. There was a time when people would go, yeah, Runaway, they're good at GOATS. The, the, this particular iteration, but what else are they good at? Can they truly be good at other things? The answer is in front of you right now. This was 2-2-2. Two, two, two. This was a very different style of Overwatch play. It didn't matter. Runaway made the adjustments required over the course of the season. They adapted to a very different playoffs meta, and they're your champions once more against the team that many people would have favored in a more DPS-centered environment. So you have to give credit not only to the players who run away, but to the staff and organization that makes this level of continued success possible. Yeah, you can definitely see why as well. This uh, one of the most popular teams in Korea to play Overwatch. And Flower Van, one of the faces of the team as well, is just so, 
got such a big following and the runaway fans are definitely going to be happy with this one. They can keep up their win streak as well against Element Mystic. Element Mystic have only taken them down once. <laughs> In the, in the entire time that they played against each other. But beating them in the finals yet again. What an amazing feat. And I can't think of a better team really to win here. They, like you said, transcended multiple matches and proved that they are the best in those. Well, it has been a momentous night of Overwatch for us here. Thank you so much for tuning in to the English broadcast here tonight. It was a pleasure. Jaws, thank you so much for filling in short notice when we were struck with some incredible technical difficulties. Uh, couldn't have done it without you. And really, just thank you so much for tuning in. And don't forget, this is not the last of contenders this year. The Gauntlet still yet to come about. Elvin Mystic may yet get their revenge. But for now, it's Runaway on Top. And we bid you farewell for the night.